Hi everyone, here's Nancy, the nurse practitioner, here to show you how to collect a urine specimen for a female continent patient. Now, a continent patient means that they're able to control their own urine. So, there's some things that you're going to need is um, to gather together is a pair of gloves if you're going to do it for somebody, not yourself. A sterile specimen container with an unbroken tab, usually comes in a plastic bag like this. Some kind of wipes uh, that are used for the, the vaginal perennial area so that you can clean the area well. And another device that I've run into called a hat, or it's actually called a Convident uh, Dover product, looks like this, that actually is used to collect urine. And this could be bought online or you can get your pharmacy to order one. Uh, these are especially good for someone who has to measure their urine output for any reason and you need to put it on the toilet because it has little tiny um, measurements there. Also, it can be disposable. They're plastic. They don't cost much. And you don't want to use them more than once if you're getting a urine specimen because, you, you know, the urine, uh, once it touches this, con this container, it becomes contaminated. Uh, I'm not sure how well you can clean this over and over again so it doesn't become as clean second, third time around. But it's great to use. It fits on a toilet. You lift up the lid, you plop it in there, and it fits on the lip. The lip. This actually goes in the front like this, and then the lid comes down. Same thing for a commode. And then once you get the urine in, in the um, container, there's like a little spout, and it could be poured into the cup. Very neat to have. It's especially good for men and women who can't stand to urinate or squat to urinate in a cup, can't aim. Um, really good to have. You may also want to have, and you should have as a paper cup, because part of getting a specimen is that you need to get a midstream or the middle of the stream of urine that coming out of the, of the area. So you don't want the first bit of urine because there's skin and organisms attached to it that you can't get cleaned really well as you're, you know, after you clean, you want to get the middle of the urine. So you want to discard that first part. So having a paper cup would be really great. Um, so you need the paper cup, the specimen cup. You, oh, you also will need a prescription from your provider, that being a, a, a doctor, DO, nurse practitioner, physician's assistant, uh, for urine and culture um, results. So you could bring the, the uh, prescription or they could call it in to your lab and then you can just bring your urine in for it for, um, to have it tested. So the, you're, you know, having a urine specimen done is usually because you're suspecting a urinary tract infection. You see blood in the urine, the urine smells, mom is not acting right, she's not eating, she's sleeping a lot, something's not cool with mom. And usually when they have a urinary tract infection, a lot of older people don't tell you what's wrong. They don't know to say, you know, I have burning when I urinate or and most of the time they don't have any symptoms. They just are not right. So getting a specimen is really important to help you. The second thing uh, you want to do or as part of this whole process is make sure that you wash your hands really well for 20 seconds front and back. And, um, you know, soap and water in between your fingers, dry them well, and then you're ready to put on a pair of gloves. When you're going to get the specimen from your mom or um, you're an aide and you're taking care of somebody, you want to always tell the person what you're going to do. Um, if they can help you in there and they're, you know, they are alert on, and they're continent, they can actually walk to the bathroom with you or go to the commode you can actually wipe them off with wipes before they get onto the toilet or the commode. This way they're clean. So let's go over some of the things about an anatomy of a female and then we'll go through the process of actually getting that specimen. When you want to clean a female, um, this is actually what is the layout. You know, here's the vagina, the bigger opening. This is the rectum back here, just so you get an idea. And right in front of the vagina is that little opening called the urethra, and that's where the urine comes from. And right above that is the clitoris. So, you know, you want to get this whole area clean. And the way you really clean is you're supposed to do like one wipe down one side, one wipe down the other side, and then a really good wipe down the center. Never go up and down, and don't use the same one twice, and throw them away. Um, 
if you could keep the labia, these these areas, his lips open, if mom can help you with that, and then you clean real well, you'll get a really good uncontaminated specimen. It takes a little doing, especially if she has to squat on the commode and whatnot, and it's hard for older people to do that. So if you have this hat on the toilet, you can actually wipe mom off, have your gloves on, have her sit on the toilet, tell her to start to urinate, and you could use that little pla little cup I told you about just to catch the first few you know inches of urine, throw that away or hold it on the, on the side, and let her urinate right into the hat. Um, if she's able to stand and squat and you don't have a hat, what you wanna do is first open this cap, make sure you, you're gonna be breaking a seal, Turn the cap upside down on the counter. You don't want to put it this way because that contaminates your whole specimen. So once you open this, this, this uh, container is now um, considered not sterile. You can actually have her squat, hold the labia or the area apart, start to urinate in the toilet, and then put the cup under and get a midstream catch. And you need about two inches in here to get a good specimen. And then you would, of course, put the cap back on. Now, if she goes in the hat, as we mentioned before, you would take the hat and you would just pour it into the cup, close the cap like this, take off your gloves, wash your hands. Okay, so the, the cup should really, this actually container should go in a Ziploc bread bag. First, put your name and your uh, date of, of obtaining it. Don't hang on to it for more than a day or so because you want the specimen to be really fresh. And the sooner you get it to the lab, the, the better. Um, and then when you uh, bring it to the lab, you do have 24 hours to refrigerate it. It takes about a day to get a urine specimen uh, urinalysis result, and it takes about um, 48 hours to get a urine culture result. And so that's what you're waiting to treat. If the urinalysis comes back with um, a lot of nit a positive nitrites, a lot of leukocytes, red blood cells in it, it has a, an odor to it, it's very turbid or cloudy, usually you know that there's probably a urinary tract infection. Sometimes your clinician will already start treating it if the person's really not doing well because you don't want to end up in the hospital with a really bad urinary tract infection. And he'll wait or she'll wait for the culture report and then change the antibiotic after we know what the culture is. Um, Okay, so make sure that uh, you get yourself a good clean specimen so you don't have to do it over again because if there's more than one organism in there, you wasted your time and you're going to have to do it all over again anyway. Okay, so that's how you collect a urine specimen and um, from Nancy, the nurse practitioner.